you'll need some reference images. My main reference will be Michael Yoga, as this is also a sim request. Try to get high quality images with minimal expression. Three quarter and side profiles can also be helpful. This method of creating skins is great because you're not limited by texturing in a 2D space. You're only limited by your imagination at this point. To export your sim mesh, go into create a sim and choose the sim you want to export. Remove their hair, clothes, accessories and eyelashes. Open TS4 Sim Ripper, select your save and scroll down until you see your sim name. Click on it, then when it loads, click save as OBJ. In the Sims 4 Studio, open your skin file and select the skin you want to export. Press export in the texture tab to extract it. Open your OBJ file which you exported from TS4 Sim Ripper into Photoshop. Set the resolution to 1K by 1K or above. I set mine to 3K by 3K. We want to make the lighting even, so go into the 3D tab, then Scene, then in the Properties tab, change your style to Unlit Texture. On the 3D tab, click current view and change the FOV to something higher. I set mine to 200 to 400. Click the material of your mesh, then in properties, click the paper icon and then replace texture. Click the same paper icon, then click Edit Texture. This should open the 2D tab for you. If you want to make your skin HQ compatible, set the image size to 2048 by 4096. On your 2D Texture tab, in the Properties section, set your paint system to Texture. The main procedure of this is you make a new layer on the 2D texture tab, go into the 3D tab, then merge your reference image down onto the 3D model. The image should then be transferred onto the 2D texture on the layer you created. Now I'm going to do this with one of my references. Make a new layer on the 2D tab, then switch to the 3D tab. Then I'll paste the reference image onto the 3D tab. If you've drag and dropped it like I did, then you may have to rasterize the image after you resize it. Any editing you want to do to the image, I recommend doing it before you merge down. Pressing undo on the 3D tab requires you to reload your 2D texture. If there are watermarks or random artifacts, I try to remove them with the spot healing tool. I use the shadows and highlights tool to make the lighting less enhanced. I use the surface blur filter to smooth out his face and remove details. Now I'm going to reposition my reference to match the 3D mesh underneath.
I'll then go to filter, liquify to warp the image and to perfectly match my mesh. Enable backdrop and set it to your 3D layer if your Photoshop supports it. Right click your reference image layer, then click merge down when done. It should have projected successfully. It may look a little silly, but that's fine. You can either clean up the artifacts or keep going and repeat the same steps. We're going to use the same technique for the side of the face. It applies to any part of the mesh. It's no different. The reason I layer so many images is because it gives your skins a softer look. If you're aiming for a more realistic look, you'd normally tend to use less images and focus on the sharpness. It's very helpful to have a drawing tablet so that you can paint over this texture. I was using a mouse for this tutorial, but normally I would use a tablet. When you're done, make sure your texture placement is clean. Select all your layers and press Ctrl E. Select the polygonal lasso tool, then check the UV overlay in the properties box. Use the polygonal lasso tool to select and delete stray texture. Save your document as a PNG. Open Sims 4 Studio, click Part Type, Skin Details, Left Mole. Click on the Mole thumbnail, then click Next. Save your package in your Packages folder. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to read my description, then send a comment or message me on Tumblr or Discord.